Alrighty. This is the High School StarCraft League with Tempo and Sinvicta, the best casters in the world. Sinvicta, my brother, you are free to speak. What do you want to say? Uh, how are you? What is up? What is up? Here we are here. For the semifinal matchup between uh, Yorba Linda High School and Sunny Hills High School. Tempo and I could not be more excited to be here. Thanks to whoever the first two casters are. It was an amazing and very enjoyable cast, and I cannot wait to get this underway, my brother. All right. So let me just make sure that I don't mess up this whole obs right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it, though. But, um, yeah, man, it was a pretty, pretty sick series. Best of nine, which means that it is uh, these high schools are going to have to bring out their best players right now in order to uh, take that championship, that GSL trophy that they all long for. But we do have ourselves a T V is Z or P V Z. I'm pretty good at alphabet, trust me, believe me, I am. <laughs> but um, I will introduce the players. Spawning in the bottom left corner on Neo Planet S is uh, from uh, Sunny Hills High School. He goes by the name of Roku. And spawning in the top right, not Venus, not Jupiter, not Uranus. He is the purple Zerg spawning. He goes by the name of Mars is ours. He's from Yorba Linda High School. So, we do have ourselves a uh, uh, PVZ on this awesome map. I do like this map quite a bit. And uh, we got ourselves a best of nine, Tim Victor, man. We got ourselves a best of nine, brother. We do have a best of nine. We got a early probe coming out here for Roku, who's going to be doing a little bit of scouting down here for Mars is ours. He's going to be able to catch that 15 pool tempo, and I expect to see a 15 hatch, my brother. I think so, too, as well, although the probe did see it. Uh, the Overlord is in position to see if there's any pylons being made in order to see some kind of cannon rush. However, look at that uh, rally. Uh, he's going to try to block this hatchery a little bit, and I think he's going to delay it for a bit, although uh, Mars is ours does not have enough minerals to make that hatchery, so he's getting a few good hits on this probe of Roku, but will he put that pylon down? Uh, one more hit, and that probe is going to die, though. Uh, I think he's going to get on out of there, and the hatchery will go down. Oh, it's interesting enough, he is going to be forged fast, expanding off of this. So as soon as Roku hits that 400, we should be seeing a Nexus going down for a red Protoss player. Yes, indeed, there it goes. And uh, Tempo, as a Zerg player myself, and of course you are also a Zerg player, my brother, what do you expect to see, or what do you expect to accomplish with your build once you do indeed verify the fact that the Nexus has gone down? Again, one thing I do like to point out really quick as a Zerg player out there, if you do uh, scout that your Protoss player is indeed going for a Forge Fast Expand or some, side of, some sort of early Fast Expand, you uh, buy all just for any other reason just make sure you see the nexus go down because in higher level games i'm not saying this is a high level game of course but it is known it is very known and a very very useful and uh, kind of cheesy trick where the protoss will fake a nexus and then go for a three gate robo bay all in tempo how do you scout that you don't you just have to uh, cover your bases you got to make sure that you are safe against anything that can come however um we do see it's pretty standard opener uh the cannon has already gone down for roku so he will be safe you see that probe is chilling here in between the forge and the nexus that is like the most comfortable place you can be as a pro by the way like what's up i'm in between the forge and the nexus like wow i'm in the best place of my life but this overlord will confirm that nexus going down but there has been a third going down for mars is ours which is usually the best kind of reaction you can do uh, simply because he did see the Nexus go down. So if he didn't see the Nexus go down, he would be kind of uneasy and not sure exactly what he should do. But that third next, uh, the third hatchery is definitely the right reaction for him. But uh, yeah, we're going to pretty much see how this game does pan out. And uh, to the folks that are tuning in right now, I am going to fix the overlay later. Probably the next game. Um, I do have the... Uh, well, I forget what the hell it's called. It's the uh, <laughs> Starboard. Starboard. Which does have the teams... Uh, uh oh, we got a little bit of lag though. It's the teams, and it has all the scores and all that cool stuff that you love to see. But um, right now, I am capturing the game source. So I will make sure to capture my monitor source next. Yeah, <laughs> Teal's out. <laughs> Teal's out. So Teal's has straight up just deuced on out of here. We do have the third hatchery going down for Mars is ours. And then uh, something a little bit interesting that I'm noticing that the Zerg player is doing around on Tempo. He's still, he's still mining off, uh, exclusively off of one gas here. 
And it's a little bit odd to see that. that usually you would see at least the second gas be down at this point, even so far as to see the third and fourth. I know that he took an early third hatch in response to the early Forge Fast Expand here. Uh, but I'm a little bit surprised to see a little bit of a late start on the gases there. He's just now about 90% uh, done with his second extractor and also going to be adding on that third and fourth extractors uh, at the uh, at the natural Vespine geyser soon, I hope. But I'm not really quite sure what to think about that late gas so far. Yeah, it looks pretty mind. interesting. You did notice that the... Uh the overlord speed is getting researched pretty early right now so he's going to try to get as good or scouting as he can uh that is mars is ours and uh this is actually interesting i haven't seen this too much uh where the zerg does get that overlord speed as early as they can notice that there is no lair going down yet so uh he's going to use that 100 gas in order to get that overlord speed instead of the lair so i wonder if he's nervous about what uh roku is going to be doing right now it's kind of interesting because he does have his third hatch up and going. Uh, the supplies are pretty similar, but we do see a robo transition for Roku. So it does seem like that Roku is going to go for that. I wonder if he's going to go for some kind of all-in with the robo, or is he just getting it for the observer? Not really sure. He almost did actually lose that zealot on a move command to, f to four lanes, which would have been hilarious to see. Uh, we do have that third extractor going down now, which is actually just now completed on the natural gas. And a peculiar place of the Roach Warren, actually, in the front here. Um, uh, normally, you would not see it up there unless you were trying to make a, a quick wall off versus some early... Uh, early all kind of one base all in from a Protoss player, uh, although he has scouted the Forge Fast Expand. So, again, it's a little bit unusual, I dare say wonky, to see the Roach Warren put down at the front of the natural expansion. We do have the Mother Core ship doing a little bit of harassment here on the third, uh, on the 12 o'clock expansion for Roku, and now he's going to be skedaddling on out of there as a Mothership Core does lose to a Queen one on one all day, every day, my brother. And finally, we do get to see that lair uh, coming out at the natural, uh, which again is not usually what I would say standard. It's, uh, I dare say unorthodox but it is indeed going to be going down on the natural hatchery and it looks like both players are content with just kind of poking and prodding not where not really doing too much as far as offensive uh offensive moves go I would say yeah. uh, a little bit of posturing we do have a Zergling which is going to be blocking the third expansion for Roku and actually Roku is in danger of losing this probe here and uh, that would be pretty nice if Mars is able to do that in fact Oddly, en oddly enough, the Zergling did not block the hatch. Did not block the Nexus. So no, he didn't. But it does look like Roku is going to be setting up to get some kind of expansion right now. So that Robo is pretty much for. Although the uh, Immortal did come out first for uh, for Roku, so it's a little bit interesting right now. Uh, Mars is ours. Does know that Roku wants to take a third. So I wonder what his reaction is going to be. And it does look like it's going to be some kind of uh, infestation pit. I wonder if he's going to be getting an uh, early swarm host in order to try to contain Roku right now, because with the few units that Roku does have right now, uh, some Swarm Host could be pretty effective, although there is a robotics facility out for Roku, so he can get that Observer out pretty quickly, but it doesn't seem like he really wants to right now. Yeah, uh, if he's planning on going uh, some sort of Swarm Host play or even going into Festers, he needs to first make sure he gets that Saturation down uh, down pat on his second base, as well as get those 5th and 6th Extractors up, because Swarm Hosts are very, very greatly Vespine gas intensive, and he only has currently 9 drones mining on the Mineral Patch for the Natural Patch. His uh, main base is looking pretty good. And the third is pretty, uh, it's saturated, but he has, he's not taking a gas. So I'm not sure if he's going to be rushing. He is indeed, uh, he just started the Enduring Locust upgrade. So it will look like for Swarm Host, but it's hard to do that off of just four gases tempo. You usually need five or six. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to be getting, look, six Swarm Hosts already. Oh, and the Hydralis Den is going down as well, because I don't believe that Mars is ours. Actually, he got a pretty good scout. Uh, he knows a Robo is on the, on the way, but he does not know about the Robotics Bay. So it does look like Roku is going to be going for some kind of Colossus play. Um, and there, I don't think there's any Spire on the way, actually. I don't know if Mars even knows. We do have a Dark Shrine coming down here at the main base for Roku now, as well as Blink is almost halfway done, including Ground Weapons Level 2. So uh, Roku's going to be in pretty good shape here on this attack. Now, again, it does look like Mars is ours, is going to try to do some little bit of a Swarm Host contain. He needs to ver be very, very careful. What I tell Zerg players all the time is you need to make sure that you're treating your Swarm Host as Broodlords, and if they are out of position by any means, any stretch of imagination, they will get murked very, very quickly. So he needs to be very careful. And the Colossus, the first Colossus is now on the field as well, so the Robotics Bay will indeed be spotted as soon as the Colossus has made its presence known to have a little bit of a proxy pylon going down defensive position out here, and I don't know if he's going to actually engage this or not. I don't know if this is a wise move for Mars as ours. 
Yeah, he's in a weird position. He doesn't really have the support for these swarm hosts. However, I don't think there's actually an observer on the map yet. Uh, so these swarm hosts could pretty much pay for themselves if there are no observers on the map. There's there no aren't. observers. Uh -oh. No, there's no observers, and here come the Locusts. They're going to be starting to poke away and kind of chip away at the armor of the third base. Now, of course, this is going to uh, trigger Roku into doing some sort of retaliatory attack here, but currently he has no way of seeing the Swarmos, and actually he's still not making an observer right still, now. Still, he's just making Colossus. He's, he's getting finally that extended just thermal lens. There it goes. Uh, plus two, though, keep in mind, is on the way. So he's going to keep on getting those upgrades, but I feel like he can still put a lot of pressure with these Swarmos. However, uh, Mars is ours has no idea that there is no observer on the map. But it does seem like Mars is ours really doesn't have a scary army. I don't think he knows that there is an ob there's no observer, although it's going to be making his way onto the field very shortly. But uh, this army for Mars is ours is pretty scary for Roku because there is no detection. But once that observer does come out, uh, I believe that it's going to change the tide of battle right now however that third has been running for roku for so long now and it's gotten down pretty uncontestedly so it looks like there's going to be some kind of ninja expansion for mars is ours in the top left corner of the map now we do have a trio of dt's making the way and they're actually going to catch the swarm most unburrowed here and if mars is ours is not careful he may throw away a lot of units we do have one dt splitting off from the trio going into the third base here and i still don't think he's actually attacked anything with it yet tempo he's just going to be slipping right on by yep. and i did hear the dt attack now the dt's have been made known there is an overseer on the map and they're going to be bringing uh bringing all the zerg units back here to take away at the dt's taking a look at the workers lost tab really quick here he's already lost 18 and now 19 workers 20 and the count is still going up there's still another dt in the 12 o'clock expansion and uh, roku is slaying all them drones my brother 22 and drones already have been killed player. bro yeah, we wow. have a warp prison now doing another warp in of Zealots, and they're they're going to easily be able to take out this third base. And Mars and Ars, he's in kind of a little bit of trouble right now. Yeah, he's in a bit of trouble right now. He has a lot of money and a lot of gas, so I wonder what his transition is going to be. I don't believe that he did get the hive yet. Uh, his lair is... Oh, no, he did get the hive already, so what kind of high tech hive tech will he decide to do? He loses his third. He's getting seven vipers on the way as well. So, Roach Hydra Composition, looks like he's going to be going for that Roach Hydra Viper Composition, which is really, really, really powerful against that uh, Death Ball of a Protoss army that does include the Colossus, but it looks like they're going to be Archon's Morph tier from those DTs, because he realizes that the Observer, I mean, that the detection of Mars is ours is pretty strong. It seems like the DTs did their dirty work, and I don't know if Mars is ours is going to actually be caught off guard by DTs anymore. But this top left Not base is still running sure. pretty far. Now we do have two zealots. To, the zealots have now spotted the 11 o'clock expansion, and the main force of Roku is now moving out towards the eastern portion of the map. The war prison with the DT, with the DT in it quickly gets denied by the hydras, but the main engagement is about to happen right outside of the natural of Mars is ours, and if he's not careful, I mean, he, he could lose a couple Vipers here really quickly. Everything is completely out of position. The ground force is just now making the way to the front of the natural expansion, and take a look at the army supply tab real quick. It is going to heavily favor the Zerg player, but it's all going to come down to control. Where are going to be the blinding clouds? Are there going to be any abducts? We do have a warp prism drop going off with a warp in a round of, uh, of eight DTs, actually seven DTs, or no, seven zealots and one DT, excuse me, and we're about to see the main engagement right now with those Vipers tempo. Yep, and one Archon is getting Yanked, yoink, <laughs> yoink mother ship goes, core the goes core. down <laughs> pretty easily right now, but there's so much damage being done in the main of Mars is ours, and also that top left base has actually been oh. taken out, and this army of Roku doesn't even look that scary right now, because there are a ton of roaches, a ton of, well, let's see, these force fields. We do have a couple of feedbacks going down on the Vipers, and that almost one-shot a couple of them. But the problem for Roku is right now is that if he loses this army, he doesn't really have anything to remax on. Yes, he's he's up three bases to one, almost four bases to one right now. But the problem is, if without any army, he has no way of actually recovering from this. Now, what Mars is ours has to do, he needs to throw up a lot of spines. He needs to make sure to try to get that 12 o'clock expansion because he can win this in a straight-up fight as long as he controls it. Again, it all comes down to the control. Taking a look at the units tab real quick. He already lost five of those Vipers. Vipers, and Vipers are not cheap. You have to make sure you're controlling them perfectly. But again, uh, we are not looking at professional players, I don't believe. I believe one of them was, uh, I think, Platinum. The other one was Diamond. Yep. And we do have the uh, <laughs> we have these six Zealots going to town. It's going to take them forever 
to get those larvae done. And finally, uh, Marzanars is doing what I think he should have done a while ago, which was Siege from the eastern portion on the th on the third base down here. That's a much, much easier place to attack rather than sandwiching yourself between the natural and the third base of the Protoss. And he is going <laughs> to... <laughs> He's going to be putting down those two Swarm Hosts, and they got some work cut out for him. Yeah, they do. And look at this. This, this army of Roku is pretty scary right now, but notice behind all of this that was going on, Roku has been pretty much demolishing all of Mars Azar's economy. He took out two hatcheries, uh, one in the main. He actually took out the main hatchery. He took out the third hatchery. Actually, three hatcheries. The top left one went down as well, and there's a zealot keeping watch. Saying none shall pass. Just chilling yeah, there, kicking it. He's only on one base right now. I mean, he still has minerals in his main base, but he's got no hatchery. Yeah, he and has the money, if, but not I mean, the this larva. is it. I mean, if Mars, if Mars is ours, loses any of this army, he cannot replace it. Yes, he's got a, a, uh, and a plethora of minerals banked up, almost 4k in the bank. But if Roku decides to move out against this, I mean, there's, he's only, he's only got one base to kill. Yeah. And it does look like this is Mars Azar's final stand. Uh, he's not remaking any of those hatcheries. So if this army is able to take out all of the army of Roku, he's going to be in a really, really good spot. Uh, one Colossus is shelling away at these uh, roaches. But this Nexus looks like it's going to go down. Another Nexus has gone down for Roku in the top left. But what what is Roku's uh, answer for all this? Like, there's really... I mean, there's so many units from Mars Azar's. Uh, I believe the army supply is 110 to 62 in the favor of... Uh, Yo Belinda, which is Mars Azar's player, but uh, I mean, there's really not that much larva on the map. There's uh, seven larva that can make units, but I mean, what what is he gonna make right now to deal with this army that Mars? Well, I mean, really, uh, the problem Roku. the problem is moving out to the front of the natural expansion for Roku. And if you see him right now, Tempo, we got two carriers on the field along with plus one air weapons, cause LOL, LOL. <laughs> and we do have a uh, denial on the third base. Actually, technically, it will be the second mining base up here at the noon expansion. But again, we do have some high Templars there. Take a look at the army supply tab real quick. It does indeed still favor our Zerg player, but really, he can only remax. Maybe uh, he can't even remax at this point. Yeah. He's got no larva. He has no hatcheries. I mean, really, if I was Roku in a in a Protoss player's position at this point, I would either try to force a base race or just take out the army of your Zerg player. Make sure you take care at least of all of the swarm hosts that are on the field if you can. Stay in that one tightly packed Protoss death ball that everybody loves to complain about and either force a base race or just go ahead and do the trade. You will come out even on a losing end of that trade due to the fact that you still have infrastructure. You still have production tabs or production facilities rather and you are able to rematch while your Zerg opponent is not. You know he's down to one base, and uh, it looks like here comes the engage right now. All the Zealots are going to be instantly melting away to all those Hydras. A Yoink on a carrier! That's the first time I think I've ever seen that. <laughs> of course, we have a double Yoink as well. Two Abducts going down on the carriers. Car one carrier does finally get taken out. Another Abduct on the Colossus, and Roku may be in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, I think Mars Azars is going to take Earth as his home planet as well. It doesn't look like Roku's actually... He's actually attacking his own Nexus right now. Oh no, it's talking... <laughs> Oh no, but these swarm hosts, uh, free units are pretty imba, pretty good, pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. However, there are three DTs inside of this army right now, and there's no detection from Mars as ours right now. So the army supplies, the actual supplies of both of these and players, GG. GG! Well played. He's just gonna call it? I tried. I don't know why he's actually I, gonna GG here. Not quite sure why he's, why he's GGing, I mean, he's still, he's got mining. He's got larva, I mean, yeah, and yeah, he's just gonna leave the game, Whoa. so Roku... Roku does indeed go up for Sunny Hills. Yep. One game to nothing here in this best of nine team series. And it was a little bit of a wonky game from the start that we saw from our Zerg player. I mean, uh, keep in mind that he w he did take that third base. He did what, in my opinion, was the appropriate response. He took down that third hatchery at the 12 o'clock expansion around the 4 minute and 15 second mark, which is about a standard timing that you are going to see in response to a Forge Fast Expand after you confirm that the Nexus is indeed going down. So that's sort of some, some sort of weird fake. But then uh, where the wonkiness of the build started happening was right around he started placing those weird gases and at the weird timing and making the lair at the natural, for example, and also dropping the, the Roach Horn outside of the natural expansion. All in all, I, I believe Mars had a he had a, a plan. He wasn't sure how he's going to get from point A to point B. He just knew that he needed to get to point C at some point, and he just didn't manage to get there for uh, one one reason or, of an, or another. So congratulations to our Protoss player, Roku, for yep. making his team go up one to nothing. Yeah, that's pretty interesting right there. So it uh, uh, looks like... Um, yeah, I don't know why he GG'd so early, though. He had a lot of money in the bank, but he didn't have the production to actually make units. But I don't think he was out of it there, you know?
Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm not saying he could have came back and and won a la Solky, LOL. But <laughs> I think that he, he should he he had enough to really put up one more a uh, one more attempt. I feel like he was still on hive tack. He he had free larva and plenty of money in the bank. Uh, but he did feel that he was in an unwinnable position. I mean, te- realistically speaking, he was down almost five bases to one at that point with very very little production. But he still had units on the map, and with some micro, you never know what could happen. Exactly. So. That is going to be game one. It's going to go to Sunny Hills. And uh, we shall return to you very, very shortly with game two. Uh, I believe this is going to be on Belshire Vestige. So hold on to your seats, folks. We shall return incredibly shortly. Enjoy more. Drum and bass. Drum and bass. You know you love it so, so much because, I mean, I did create the playlist. So obviously it's a good playlist. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We will return very, very shortly.